My name is Jim Ernston, and it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Thank you for live streaming with us. We appreciate that. So a few announcements this morning before we get going. We will be live streaming at 9.30 a.m. each and every Sunday morning for as long as necessary. And know that all of our Holy Week services will also be live streamed. We encourage you to stay in touch with us through this time. And there are six different ways that you can stay in touch with us. One is our website, unityminneapolis.org. Also, our weekly Peak at the Week email, which you can sign up through the website. Facebook, special email blasts. You can also call the church and leave a message at 763-521-4793. Or you can email us at office at unityminneapolis.org. On the website, we also have our Unity Spiritual First Aid Kit, and that consists of our Sunday live streamings that we've done in the past, both on the website and Facebook Live, the Daily Word Inspiration li uh, Line, which is, and here's the phone number, 763-522-4441, there's our prayer ministry, which you can submit a prayer request, a prayer request on the website. 
You can also pray with silent unity, and that is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Silent Unity Prayer Service is also live streamed, and that's our very own live stream prayer service Monday through Thursday via Zoom. Now, to get that Zoom link, please call the church office. Again, 763-521-4793, or you can email us at office at unityminneapolis.org to get that link. Now, we have partnered with PRISM to collect food for Pack the Pews. Now, during this time, the visits to the, to the food shelf have actually doubled, and yet donations are down. So PRISM is seeking donations of food and money to assist those that are most vulnerable in our community. So you can make a financial don uh, donation at www.prismmpls.org or you can drop off food donations at PRISM, which is on 1220 Zane Avenue in Golden Valley. So now we will turn to Reverend Pat for a opening prayer. Good morning, beloved family and friends. And this morning we are joining with Unity Worldwide Ministries and Unity Ministries around the world for our opening prayer. And we invite you to join me this morning. Just go within. Gently close your eyes and focus your attention inward to that place that only you can go. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties and we affirm that all are safe and healthy and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And we surrender again to this infinite, invisible presence within. We feel this presence this morning as life itself life expressing through us as us. And we know that we are one with it. And we give thanks that we are divinely protected. We give thanks that the radiating life of God, the health of God flows through us today. And for that, we are indeed grateful. And we say, thank you. Thank you, God. And again, thank you, God. And again, thank you, God. And so it is, amen. Join us for our opening song and the lyrics are in your program. Such a holy place 
Hey, you sound great. Feel free to sing harmony. You are deepest joy. Deepest joy is all that you are, yeah. You are deepest joy. Dave, deepest joy is all that you are. Show the way. Show the way, God, show. Sacred love, you are sacred love. Sacred love is all that you are. Here we go. You are sacred love, God. Sacred love is all that you are. Sacred love is all that you want. Good morning again, friends. We're so grateful that you joined us today, live stream. It's really a joy to have you with us. We are an open and welcoming, inclusive community, and therefore one of our, also one of our core values here is that of welcoming. So we welcome you today. Even though you're not physically with us, we know that you're with us in spirit. This is the time in our service where we normally turn to each other and we greet each other. We do it with a handshake, a hug, a smile, namaste, Let's take just a few moments in your home or wherever you're streaming from just to pause and greet someone. If you're by yourself there today, just greet your higher self. If you have your pets with you, greet your pets. Last week I had a great note from someone that said, my dog didn't know what to do when I was greeting them. And so this, today I want us to greet each other virtually and also greet someone from your home as well. Let's take just a moment and do that as well. And I just also want to shout out and give thanks for all these beautiful souls that have come in and helped produce this service today. We are grateful for that. Let's greet each other, okay? We now move deeper into spirit with the reading of the daily word. The word for today is inner peace. And we affirm, I find the peace of God in the silence within me. The Hebrew scripture tells the story of the word of the Lord commanding the prophet Elijah to stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. As he waits, Elijah fails to find God as he endures the wind strong enough to split mountains, an earthquake, and then a fire. Then Elijah discovers God in a sound of sheer silence. Sometimes chaos surrounds me, and I try to find the peace of God. Other times, the chaos may be inside me. I persist in my efforts as I confront inner storms, fires, and earthquakes as I search for that peace. Like Elijah, I remain steadfast in faith, undisturbed by what is happening around me. I wait for distractions to pass. Peace is mine. And the scripture tells us, after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. The word for today is inner peace.
Let's move into our meditation. So take this time to get comfortable, seated, your hands on your lap, and if it feels comfortable, to close your eyes and to breathe. Notice that breath. Notice that inhale. And then that exhale as we let go. And again, we inhale and exhale. And I declare the truth, the truth of my life, that I am a creation of a loving God. And I know this to be true. This is my natural state one of love. And I focus on that spiritual quality of love through this practice of meditation. My consciousness becomes one of expectation, an expectation of love and joy. A consciousness that knows circumstances do not dictate my reality. My reality is spiritual. My reality is based in love. The simple act of turning within and opening up to that love of God can make all the difference. I take a breath and I move within. I know that Divine Spirit is here with me now and that there is never a time or place that I am separated from that Divine Presence. And I take another breath. I notice the inhale and I feel the release of the exhale. I allow that space, that slight pause between that inhale and that exhale to flood with love. I feel the inhale of my breath. And when that ends, just before that exhale, I feel pure love. And I continue to receive that knowing with each breath, that inhale, love, exhale, and joy. And with that practice, we take the next two minutes 
and our awareness of love in silence. And as we come out of that silence, we claim that love that we know to be ours. And our spirits expand with each and every breath. And we know that our lives have become one through this practice, a life where love cannot be contained cannot be contained by boundaries, and we are blessed with that knowledge. And if they're still closed, we open our eyes, we shift around, but we continue to feel that love now, throughout the day, and into the next week, into this coming week. And we know that it is so. Namaste. People come into our lives for a reason Bringing something we must learn And we are led To those who help us grow If we let them And we help them in return Well, I don't know if I believe that's true but I know I'm who I am today because I knew you. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun. Like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? Because I knew you I have been changed For good It will may be That we will never meet again In this lifetime Let me say before we part So much of me is made of what I learned from you, you'll be with me, just like a handprint on my heart. Now, whatever way that our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine. 
by being my friend Just like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea Like a seed dropped by a skybird off in a distant wood well Who can say if I've been changed for the better but because I knew you I have been changed for good well just to clear the air I ask forgiveness for the things I've done that you blame me for But then I know there's blame to share and none of it seems to matter anymore Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun like a string that meets a boulder halfway through a distant wood. Well, who can say if I've been changed for the better by no? I do believe I have been changed for the better. Because I knew you. Because I knew you I have been changed For good Thank you, Laurie Darkin. And Pete, it's good to have you back. Dave, it's good to have you back. We missed you last Sunday. I'm so pleased that you're keeping your physical distancing there, you know, so thank you very much. Good morning again. It's great to have you streaming with us today. I wish I'm give, reaching out right now, giving you this huge virtual hug. As a matter of fact, I wish you could see the sanctuary. I've placed hearts around there to remind me to do everything I can from a distance to connect heart to heart with you. I'm going to begin with a story. I was in a long line yesterday at 5.45 a.m. at the grocery store that opened at 6 for seniors only. I qualify. A young man came from the parking lot and tried to cut in front of the line, but an old lady beat him back into the parking lot with her cane. I checked it out, and I can assure you that she was not a unity member of this church, Okay. He returned and tried to cut again, and an old man punched him in the gut and kicked him to the ground and rolled him away, and he was not a member of Unity either. And as he approached the line for the third time, I heard him say, if you don't let me unlock the door, you'll never get in there. So my friends, I hear you laughing from home. Thank you very much. There's a few things I'd like to chat with you about this morning. First of all, other than just the fact that I miss you greatly, I'd like to talk a little bit more about oneness as we conclude our series this morning on our cosmic connection or oneness. And then I would also like to talk a little bit about well, how we can handle discouragement and fear. So obviously we believe in oneness here in Unity, that we are all connected, that we are all one. Now, it certainly does not appear that way, does it? As we look out, we can see so many differences, different red and yellow, black and white races. We see different political uh, statements made. We have different sexual orientations out there. We see a lot of diversity, and this is good. And yet, underneath all of this diversity is oneness. And why is it oneness? It's because God that we believe in is omnipresent. And this God within connects us all. So we are one. And I think more than ever, I'm beginning to realize this at this time, how we are one around the entire planet, you know? And yet different souls come to this earth for different reasons and different purposes. And yet it has been said, that the, the journey of one soul is the journey of all souls. 
It's also been said by Ram Dass that what we are here to do is just walk each other home. So first of all, let's just acknowledge that we are one with each other as we look beyond what we see as the differences. We honor those differences, but we also see our oneness. And if you notice what happens when we begin to truly feel that oneness and to know that oneness more than just with the intellect, but also with the heart, what happens is there seems to be less competition since we're all one, we don't necessarily have to struggle to get ahead because we are one. We have a sense of, more, of greater compassion on our planet when we realize that we are one. We're here not only to support each other, but we're here to know that we are one, that I am my brother and that I am my sister. So oneness is a key point here. And I believe that oneness transcends everything. Oneness, obviously, or allness, is another name for the divine. Of course, one of my favorite names for the divine is that of love. In 1 John, we are told very clearly, very simply, that God is love. And if we want to experience this divine presence of God, then we are here to love each other, to love each other. I believe also that life is a continuum. It's not that life has a beginning and life has an end. There is no beginning and there is no end. We are taught that life is everlasting life. And therefore, I believe with all my heart that love is also everlasting in the Song of Solomon, we are reminded that love is stronger than death. And I believe that to be so true in my own life. I know for a matter of fact that people that have gone into the other side, as we so often refer to, are transitioned into the next expression of being, whatever that may be. We call it good. I believe that I feel the presence, and just as you have shared with me, many of you have shared with me, that you have felt the presence of a loved one that has passed onto the other side. This presence that we feel is love, and it too is part of this continuum of everlasting life. So my friends, we know that the love that we express today with our loved ones this love continues for eternity. So let us remember to do that, to love each other. Let me share with you some scripture that I love so much. It's from 1 John. John's the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So during these challenging times right here, we want a greater awareness of the presence of God, then let's look for ways to express this love that is within us, to express it and know that as we express this love, that it continues for eternity. Isn't it comforting to know that the person that, maybe that special person in your life, you love so much that you will know in the possibilities of feeling this love for eternity. Often people will say to me, Reverend Pat, what is it like on the other side? Well, I don't know what it's like on the other side. And yet people have said that they have come back from the other side and that it has been bright light, a feeling of serenity, and a feeling of love. And I believe that whatever it is, that it is absolute good. For God is good. God is good and God is everywhere present. So, so often we, can, we get to that place that we think, oh my goodness, I'm fearful. Or often I have heard people say that, that the life ends at the cemetery. It does not. It continues on. This soul continues on surrounded by God's love and God's light. Powerful. God is love. 
We are spiritual beings, and we feel that love not only in our humanity, but also in our spirit as well. We are spiritual beings, and we are having this human experience right now. And some of us would prefer not to be having this human experience right now. Some of us would like for it to be somewhat different. I know, at times, I would like it to be very different. And yet, acceptance is one of the main keys in spirituality. Until we can accept things as they are right now, that does not mean not do something about it. But until we can accept things as they are, then we cannot begin to change it. So, my dear friends, let's take this opportunity to know that acceptance is the key. The acceptance of what is, is the key. Also, yet I'm a human, Reverend Pat, I'm human. I, I, I get fearful. I, I get discouraged in my life. And why, I say, and why should you be any different? Most of us do. Most of us get to that point of discouragement and fear. And many of you may be at that place right here and right now. Or like me, you may go in and out of this place. This place of love, this place of fear, this place of faith, this place of fear. And yet we know that it's important for us not to hang out in fear. It's important for us not to hang out in discouragement in our own life. It's important for us to remember the teachings that we teach here. And so one of the things that helps me tremendously, tremendously, when I go down that dark rabbit hole of fear and discouragement, is something of the teachings of Mr. Eric Butterworth, Reverend Butterworth, of course. He taught me early on that there were three simple things that I could do, three simple words that I could remember in order to help alleviate that fear and step back into love and step back into faith. He says three words. He says that first word that we're to remember is lift, lift. He reminds us how often the word lift is used in Scripture. Lift your eyes into the hills where my strength comes from, or lift my head, or lift my voice, or lift my hands. The word lift is used throughout Scripture, especially in Psalms. Now, obviously, there's a deeper meaning to that, and that means that we must lift our consciousness. We must lift our consciousness in a new way, in a different way in our own life. And so, one of the great conscious lifters that I know of is that of gratitude and thanksgiving in our life. Have you noticed that when you start to look for something to be grateful for, something to, that you have gratitude for, that it begins to change our whole outlook in, on life? This past week, I was uh, obviously our staff is working from home, and I was working from home, and I heard the male person come and I went to the mailbox, and there I opened it, and there was one of my favorite magazines. I, st I, still get, I still get the hard copy. I still get the hard copy of Time, and I love it. So I pick up the hard copy. I get it electronically as well. Give me a point there, please. But I get, I get electronically as well. And at the same time, I love the hard copy. And on this cover of Time magazine was all the goodness that was happening Story after story after story of the goodness that's happening in our country right here, right now. People preparing meals for each other. People delivering meals. Chefs, famous chefs from all over the world. One went to Oakland and set up outside of the cruise ship. They were running out, out of food and set up that. And oh my goodness, fed thousands of people, not only the guests, but the crew as well. Another, I saw a scene in Italy, and Italy's known for its music, and they were serenading each other from their balconies. What gifts they were looking to give. You see, my friends, as we lift ourselves up and we change that state of consciousness, then it is our nature in order to give, and we look for ways to give. 
And I know without a doubt that you are doing the same thing. You're looking for ways to give of yourself during these times. The second word that Mr. Butterworth reminded me uh, to, if I want to change and keep from being discouraged and hanging out in fear, that second word is believe. Believe. Believe that things are going to be different. Believe that we are going to come out on the other side of this, a stronger nation, a stronger world. Believe that we are going to come out of this a stronger community, a different community, a community that loves each other more, that steps into service more as well. Believe that. And then believe. Bring it into your own personal life. Believe, my dear friends, that you are going to come through this whole and well and free. Believe for your family Your family will come through this as well. Believe is the key. Because you see, our beliefs, you know this, it's our fundamental teachings. Our beliefs affects our behavior. And if I am believing that I am going to come through this with bells on, as we say, come through in a better situation, then my behavior is going to change. It's going to change, and I will behave in a different way. I will be more conscientious not only of others, but I'll be more conscientious of doing my part in decreasing the curve. And once we believe that and we begin to to literally behave differently, then the outcome will be different. So we all must come together believing those things that are positive in our life. You know, each and every morning we get up and we can decide what kind of attitude we are going to have for the day. Whether it's going to doom or gloom or whether I'm stepping forth to believe something in a positive way. Believe. We're told throughout Scripture, Jesus, our teacher and our way sure tells us to believe. Believe, of course, is another word, my dear friends, for faith. To have that faith. And if you notice, we normally get what we expect. So expect the good. That third word that Mr. Butterworth reminded me me of so much in his teachings was the word wait. Wait. Wow. Lift. Believe. Wait. Wait. That doesn't sound very action-oriented, does it? That doesn't seem to fit my personality at all. Sit around and wait. Wait. And yet the word wait, and how many times have we heard it in Scripture? Wait on the Lord. Wait. And what happens is when we take that word wait, and it comes from the word kava, which means to bind together. And what are we binding together? We're binding ourselves with that divine presence within. We are binding it and knowing it. We're already bound to it. We might as well remember it. Remember that we are bound to that presence. And if you noticed also that when we wait on the Lord, often the word strength is used in the scriptures. Wait on the Lord. And you will rise up like eagles. Strength is associated with that so much in our life. So it's absolutely imperative that once we start going down this rabbit hole of fear, and discouragement to get out of it, to get out of it. Because during this time, we can just not put our principles on hold and say these principles work when everything is hunky-dory and they don't work, they, we don't want to use them necessarily when it's challenging. And this is the time that we must use our principles in our life. Wow. Yeah, I believe without a doubt That during this time, we are called to shine, to let our light shine. Nancy Little, a very active licensed unity teacher in this church for many years, referred to this congregation as the light on the hill, the light on the hill. And I believe that that's what we are being called to do right now, 
we are called to let our light shine and be the hands and the feet and the voice of the Christ presence within. You know, I think of, I think of the prayer of St. Francis. I don't have it memorized, but I want to share it with you if I can put my hands on it. Uh, but the prayer of St. Francis basically says, you know, where there is despair, let me bring hope. So we at this time have the opportunity to bring hope to the world. Hope to the world, not only hope in our lives, but hope to the world as well. This morning as I was, uh, during my meditation time, I heard my um, phone ding, and I got a little message through Messenger from someone that used to attend here. They've moved to Florida, and they stream with us on a regular basis. Hello out there. And they stream with us on a regular basis, and she sent me this. She says, first of all, she thanked me for what we were doing here at Unity Minneapolis and appreciated all of the stuff that we were doing and how we were changing and affecting people's lives. But then she thought, she sent me something that was so cute. I want to share it with you. She says, I trust God and I lock my house at night. I trust God, and I have smoke detectors in my home. I trust God, and I take my prescribed medication. I trust God, and will follow the best guidelines to share the task of flattening the curve. Because we know these principles does not mean that we can be reckless. It means that we have to be more careful than ever in doing our part to flatten the curve. I am grateful that you're with us today. I love you. I bless you. I behold the living presence of God within you. And remember, your assignment, dear friends, is to lift when you are discouraged. It is to believe. And it's to wait upon the Lord. And so it is. Amen. in search of the answers look for God and life on distant planets have your faith in the ever after while each of us holds inside the map to the labyrinth well heaven's here on earth and sacrifice heaven's in our hearts look at our faith in humankind and our respect for what is earthly and our unfaltering belief in peace and love and understanding
Look around, believe in what you see. And if the kingdom is at hand, the promised land is at your feet. We can and will become what we aspire to be. If heaven's here on earth. Come on, come on, if we have faith in humankind and respect for what is earthly and our unfaltering belief that truth is divinity, then we'll see a heaven here on earth. I've touched creations Beautiful and wondrous I've been in places Where I question all I think I know But I believe, I believe, I believe This could be heaven We are born inside the gates with the power to create life and to take it away. The world is our temple, the world is our church. Heaven's here on earth. Come on, we have faith in humankind and respect for what is earthly. Understanding this could be heaven here on earth. All right, thank you, Ben. I want to invite you to make a gift to Unity Minneapolis this morning. Uh, obviously, our expenses continue, just as yours does. Your support of our community truly is appreciated. And so this morning, there's several ways that you can make that secured gift. First of all, you can go right through our website. There's a donate button there. It's secured. You can make a, do a donation, a gift on our website. The second way, if you're using a smartphone today and streaming on our phone, using a smartphone, you can do that through texting 77977, 77977, and in the text body, give to unity. That's G-I-V-E, two, the numeral two, and unity. And that will also take you to a secured place to make that donation. And the third way you can do that, obviously, is mail a check. Mail a check in an old-fashioned envelope. We got it, we got them this week, and we thank you so much for that. So let us go within and bless these gifts that you are preparing right now. We just feel that divine presence right now, and we know this presence as a prospering presence. We're grateful for this community, grateful for the opportunity to connect via live stream, grateful for this service that is offered now, I am going to affirm our church offertory blessing once. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And now silently. Thank you, God. Amen.
Let me tell you something I know, I know that I see, whoa, because I'm happy, and I sing. can feel that God is watching me and you and you and you and you too. So let us bless these gifts. We bless all of these gifts and we truly send them forth to fulfill our vision and mission of a transformed world and we are grateful. We are grateful, and we say, thank you, God, and so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. I want to acknowledge our unduty unity prayer chaplains. They're not on duty here in our sanctuary, but they're holding sacred space from their homes. They held sacred space even before our service began, and they continue to hold sacred space. Today, if you would like a prayer request, or uh, you have a prayer request, by all means, you can submit it on our website, and we will hold that in prayer as well. Also, I just want to remind you that next Sunday, we begin Holy Week, Palm Sunday. We invite you to come and join us again, as again, we celebrate the entrance of Jesus into that holy city. Wow, many things are happening. We invite you to check out our website, check out the different ways that we communicate with you as well. And we so much appreciate your support during this time. This is the time when we normally bring in our children. Obviously, our children are not here today. But I want to just pause and appreciate our children. They are so important to our community. And our Youth and Family Ministry Director, Cassidy Meeks, has been reaching out to families and providing ways that, they, that she and we, this church can support them with their own spiritual growth during this time. So, I also want to thank all of the volunteers that are working with Cassidy to make this program continue to happen, and for that, we are grateful. So, if you're... If you're still with us, which I know you are, would, I'm going to invite you to, if you're able to, to stand for our prayer for protection. So let us know together our prayer for protection. So together we know that the light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, I am divine, and all is swell. And our peace song.
Love it. Some. Nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. Love. Nothing you can make that can't be made. Love. No one you can say that can't be saved. Yeah. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. isn't known nothing you can see that isn't shown uh -huh. no way you can be where you isn't meant to be it's easy Dave Brigett, Pete Hennig, Lisa Harper, ASL today, Todd Smith, and Jay, and the great video crew. Thank you very much. See you next week.